Welcome to the link tonight. And once again, we are discussing tourism and opportunities. Here on the link, we link you to opportunities and information. To inform you, we'll have to make decisions in terms of um, investment and where you put your money safely. And as I said, again, we are discussing tourism and opportunities tonight on the link. My guest tonight is Mr. John Sempewa, the Deputy ED of the Uganda Tourism Board. John, you're welcome. Thank you very much. We discussed tourism here before, but now we are going into certain specific things that maybe a number of Ugandans can touch. Mm. Let's start with the opportunities, John, mm. from the standpoint of Uganda Tourism Board. What are some of the opportunities that uh, Ugandans can touch in terms of tapping into tourism? Thank you very much. Um, what Ugandans need to know today is that the tourism sector is growing. In the past five years, the number of tourists coming to Uganda has doubled from 700,000 to 1.5 million. The best tourism year this year, I hear. As we go towards celebrating Uganda Wild Tourism Day on 27 September, I am here to inform Ugandans that there's money to make in this sector. The biggest business in the world today is tourism. 1.2 billion people all over the world are looking for places to visit. They have money, they want to spend money, and they'll spend money in Uganda. Mm. Stay tuned and listen where you can invest. You, and, and, and you're right, you don't need a million dollars to invest. Listen, I'm going to show you and tell you where, where to invest. But first of all, mm. let's start by forgetting the word Muzungu. This word Muzungu, we should forget. The word Muzungu was coined to meet somebody who comes from the Ugandan verb of Kuzunga Zunga. Let's, <laughs> let's start referring to these people as Abalambuzi. So let's start by, these guys bring money. Mm. So where are, the, where are the opportunities? One, before they come, they need information. Uh, we have very smart Ugandans who are unemployed. Yeah. The first opportunities are investing in information. If you can develop a tourism app, Mm. a phone-based app. Mm. If you can develop a website, our two operators need help in uh, revamping uh, their websites. Mm. If you can invest in developing content for two operator websites, if you can do a blog, mm. and besides, you didn't know, movies. Yeah. Uh, the movie industry is becoming big. Mm. We have waited for people to come from Hollywood to do movies on Uganda. If you can do a movie on a Ugandan hero, but make it internationally appealing, viable, mm. you have money to make, my friend. So we're talking technology here, John. Yeah. Apps. You mean we don't have an app that in tourism that talks about it, gives information? We have. We don't have. You see, in this modern era, we have so many. There, there has to be option. Yeah. People are downloading all sorts of apps today. Mm. As long as you make your app appealing, and you can specialize. We need apps on Uganda birds. Mm. These birds that actually fly. We have w over 1,000 species. We need apps on that. If you have an app on where to hang in Kampala, for example, mm. if you have an app on lodges in Uganda, you know, there are so many opportunities. And if you don't know where to start, walk into UTB. Yeah. We are at UTB to help Ugandans to invest in these apps. If you don't know where to invest, you come, we'll tell you. Okay, we have done with the information. Now, yes. what else? Uh, you see, tourism is about before people come, and I've explained that, that the opportunities are in information. Yes. Now, let's consider when the tourists come. The first thing they need is transport. Mm. Um, border, border tours. Register a company that takes tourists around on border, border. Mm. That takes tourists around walking, just walking. Mm. Tourists like to walk to keep fit. Or three, buy a car mm. and register it on Uber or Taxify. Okay. Tourists have phones, they're going to book you whether you like it or not. Mm. B, accommodation. They have to sleep somewhere whether they like it or not. Go to your phone mm. today, right now, and register your home for a homestay. There is an international uh, website mm. where people register 
their homes to attract tourists. It's called Airbnb. Yes. Registration of it. is free of charge. Do it right now on your phone. Go to airbnb.com and register your home. If you're at home right now, take a picture. You have a free bedroom. Mm. Take a picture of a free, nice bedroom and post it. But make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. This Abalambuzi, mm. whom we're not calling Muzungus anymore in Uganda, mm. visitors, they need basic things. They need unshared sanitation. You know, they're not going to use uh, pit latrines, okay? Pit latrine, no, 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 that one they're not negotiating. Mm. Let them have some flash, something. Uh, let them have hot water, yeah. you know, let them have hot water, they're used to that. Let them have a vermin. Proof. What uh, do you mean vermin? Vermin free room. What do you mean vermin? They don't like cockroaches. Okay, you know, okay. they don't like fleas. Fumigate that room. You know, um, they, 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 if, if you can't have Wi-Fi, it's mm. a plus. Yeah. But it's okay if you don't have Wi-Fi. Mosquito nets. We're in the tropics. They need to see that there are mosquito nets. Mm. And to get this business, Ugandans, money is made by credit cards. Go to a bank. Huh? Go to a bank of your choice and get a card like this. Get a, an account where Muzungus can pay in dollars. Mm. Every Ugandan today, we have smartphones, we have all sorts of things. Every Ugandan should get a, a, a visa card or something. That's like doing international business, yet you are local. You can't do international business mm. if you can't receive dollars. Mm. You need that dollar account, and to tap in that account, you need to be able to go, to, go into your bank and ask for a plastic card money and john yeah, the um, money card. we are now talking about the foreign visitors yeah. are there opportunities for local visitors um there, there were things i've had things like domestic tours what is that of course uh today i had a, a conference mm. with owners of tourism sites in Lubaga division the church bugana kingdom they have sites which mm. they haven't developed we have unemployed youth. You are staying near a place which has history. Put pressure on that church. Put pressure on the kingdom so that you start guiding at that site. There are so many sites, if you don't know, can give an example of Marquez Kevin Atete. There are so many sites where things happen. Mm. The church has yet to wake up to convert these places into tourism sites. Go put pressure on your church. Busega, where the first martyrs were killed. Put pressure and say, guys, I'm going to be the guide here. Mm -hmm. Take it over. There are sites where things happened and you just have to walk in and become the guide. Back to accommodation, farm stays. Ugandans, they are Japanese who have never seen a coffee plant. Mm. Ugandans, they are People all over the world who have never milked a cow. Mm. To you, it's obvious. That's milking a cow. Yes. Uh -huh. To you, it's obvious, but to them, they would pay top dollar to come to a roadside farm mm. and harvest a fruit, an orange, squeeze that juice, and make that juice, plant a tree. Mm. This is called agrotourism. Now, we don't have much time tonight, but if you want to know the nitty-gritty of how this is done as we celebrate World Tourism Day, walk into, into Uganda Tourism Board and we shall show you. Foreigners don't come here to stay in concrete jungles. Their cities are concrete jungles. Yes, just, yeah, buildings. They want to experience authenticity. They want to experience our dances, our food, our culture. There is an opportunity to invest in centers all over the country where they come in and ex whatever tribe you are right now think of doing your tribe's cultural center where they come at. there's no mulambuzi from japan uk who knows about twin initiation mm. who knows about okuhinjira put up a place where these guys can come teach them the dancing teach mm. them the how we brew mm. Let's forget this tourism based on animals. Well, it's good, it's brought in millions, but there are opportunities investing in tourism which exposes the authenticity of Uganda's rich And heritage. you don't need a million dollars. Let's just keep the homestay, uh, agro, agro tourism, sorry, uh, John. Yes. I have a farm, I'm, I'm listening to you now, and thinking, yeah. mm, 
he's talking to me. Mm. I think my firm can actually provide an opportunity. Absolutely. But then there are service standard proceed, uh, service standard levels expected. Absolutely. Give us a, a, a bit of an idea of what then what else must I have if I have a farm? What else? There are things we call the five A's of tourism. Yeah. Amenities. Um, this Mulambuzi is not come to is not going to come to use your pit latrine. Again, drill and make sure he has a flashing toilet. Mm. Okay. Two, make sure you have access. You know, tourists are going to Murchison Park, for Falls Park. People are going to Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. They're passing through Masaka, going through going through farms. Mm. All right. Mm. See if you can get an access road. And three, when they come to the farm, let there be experiences. What are they going to do? Try and see how you can involve the community mm. around you in the dances, the, their stories, the food. That is an experience that will be unforgettable for tourists in mm. the Pearl of Africa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Um, there is something that you, you didn't answer that I asked earlier. Mm. Some Ugandans are organizing other Ugandans to do tourism. Tell us about that opportunity. It's called, um, what do they call it? It's uh, domestic tours. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, tours organized for foreigners mm. are different from tours organized for Ugandans. And domestic tourism is a big deal. Should exactly. be. Exactly. Yeah. Now, Ugandans don't put as much value to animals as foreigners mm. because the foreigners don't have these animals. We have a gap in tour operators who organize tours for Ugandans. Yeah. Well, some people have come in and have tried to do wild in the park. There is a company called Koi Koi. There's another. There are several, but yeah. there are still many, many opportunities to show Uganda to Ugandans. The key thing here is pricing. Uh -huh. The key thing here is pricing. Uh, if you don't know how to price, at Ghana Tourism Board is what to do every day. We'll teach you that, all right, it's $100 to spend a night in Matison. Mm. Very few Ugandans may afford, but mm. they will afford the 4,000, 5,000, 10,000 shillings to get to the park, the 20,000 to do the cruise up to the Murchison Falls, where they're the fattest crocodiles in the world feeding on gravity flowing fish. <laughs> mm. You know? I can imagine. Let them do that, and then take Ugandans love to party. A night in Uganda, which doesn't end in a bar mm. or a drink or a party, mm. is and that's our culture. After the visit, go through the northern gate, go to either Arua or go to uh, Gulu, mm. and I will go to Masindi and have a blast. One thing where Ugandans are investing is nightlife. Today, Ugandans, as I speak, the number one source market for foreigners coming to Uganda is Rwanda. Why are Rwandans coming to Uganda every weekend? Buses and buses are coming to enjoy the Pearl of Africa mm. because of the freedom in the night, which they don't have. There are discotheques coming up in Kasese, in Barra. I have a friend who has a discotheque in Barra, Mr. Mzinguzi. Uh, there is discotheques and nightlife is all part of tourism. People are going to come to enjoy our nightlife. We don't have very strict rules on enjoying nightlife like some of our neighbors. Invest in a place where people can have, can come and have fun. But note, foreigners coming in also love to associate with their cultures. Nobody is doing a walk-in uh, place where you can come in and, and, and maybe learn how to cook uh, Ugandan food. Matoke. Matoke, Luwombo. If that place came up tomorrow, um, expatriates would come in, they walk in, you teach them how to cook our you know, various stuff. We're not thinking about these opportunities and these opportunities still exist. They are low-hanging fruits. John, uh, yeah. you said so many things, some of them are ideas that can be executed. Yeah. Last question, mm. where is UTB? You see, UTB... Where, where are the offices? The, the, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. physically, I mean, yeah, physically. <laughs> Lugogo House, but where is it uh, strategically? Mm. We change the marketing strategy of this country. We have farms yeah, out of the seconds, yes. So there are so many opportunities. The finally is specialty museums, mm. specialty museums. There, there is a Guinness Museum in Dublin. 
recently I put up a museum on Buganda. We have so many stories to tell. Where is the Amin Museum? Where is the Bota Museum? Where is the Museveni mm. Museum? Where are these museums? Ugandans, wake up and you don't need a lot of space. Small place, you do a specialty museum and you'll make the money. Thank you very much, John Sempegwa uh, from the Ugandan Tourism Board. He has thrown at you so many opportunities and I assure you, you do not need um, one million dollars no. to take advantage of these opportunities in the tourism sector. Yeah. That was the link. When Bobo arrives at the airport, let government give him his freedom. Let him walk from Kampala, from Entebbe, up to Kampala. You know, sometimes situation may not be as expected, but government.